Hey everyone, this is Ben back with you in the Midwest Mile Shop. All right, so we've got a lot of stuff going on today. Uh, first of all, um, Nora went ahead and did a small run of the uh, acetate windows uh, sets that I talked about. It's the glass pieces um, in the previous videos I asked about, and I'll show how to install during the middle of this episode. So if you go to our website, the Midwest Model Shop com the midwest uh, you give, you'll find a link in the description to make your purchase there we could ship to anywhere in the world so if you don't get a shipping option send me an email at the midwest model shop at gmail.com and i'll make sure we get that sorted out for you all right in today's episode we're going to finish up the big installation on of the of the a deck all the restaurants and little ford rooms and all that stuff we're going to put that on we're going to install the windows We'll put the window frames on. We're going to put all the railing on. Uh, we're also going to modify the parts to make sure that they fit with the boat deck that goes up on top. Uh, we're going to heavily modify the boat deck to make sure it fits with the 3D printed parts on the side in preparation for the photo etch that will be in the next episode. All those details are discussed thoroughly uh, in this episode. Um, and yeah, then we get it all thrown together. So it's it's a big milestone that we needed to reach in order to do the next part of the build. Uh, the other thing I want to touch on real quick is I want to try, with all the craziness going on in the world right now, I thought it would be really great if we could all do some good or and, and if I could do some good too. It's zero cost to everyone here. And so what I want to do is plug a gentleman named John in the UK. He has a channel called John Builds Iconic Military Models and this is the link to it right here. And I'd like it if everyone would please go to this channel right now, subscribe to his channel please, and give him a like and a thumbs up and watch some of his videos and maybe leave a nice comment. He's a wonderful hardworking man uh, who this is, as far as I know, this is kind of like halfway supplementing his income because things didn't go so great uh, in COVID form over there, and he needs it more than I do. And so that would be a really great way to help someone out by just, just go to the channel, hit like and subscribe. And I also think everyone would like his channel. I watch it. Uh, I put on regularly. I'm high speed and fast paced. He's chill and slow. He has a real nice ASMR type of voice, and uh, it's just really relaxing. He also has a great build on the HMS Victory that he's been working on a long time. He started the Titanic. He's doing the all-metal Titanic. He's got a couple a PT boat he's working on. He, he does a lot of different stuff. So he's really worth checking out. But if you, I think, you know, we have like almost 28,000 subscribers on this channel. And if we could get 3,000 subscribers over to him, that would get him up to 10,000. And that would be really incredible. And that's something that you all have the power to do just with a couple clicks of the mouse. And it really helps someone out in the community and does a lot of good for them. And I think you'll like his content. So anyway, uh, that's all I really have to say about that. Uh, let's go ahead and get into the build. Okay, here we are back in action. So this is the big piece of ADEC. And basically, there's just a couple of things I want to talk about that... Um, I did. So first of all, it's, it's just been hit with an initial coat of primer. Then when you come over here to these windows on the end, the way that it's molded, because the mold has to pull straight away like this, uh, the angled windows end up with the small little slit in there. And so you have to uh, take the time to get it to focus. And you got to clean out all of that stuff inside of there so that uh, the window looks normal. So I went ahead and did that. Um, then, let's see here, we pulled the doors off. Uh, there's a couple of pieces like this that go on. This is this is the new photo etch uh, doors from KA that are installed. Uh, I've got some assembly down here on the end. And same down here. So that's basically it. So what this will allow me to do is now go ahead and prime all this up again, uh, clean up anything that's kind of a mess, and then we'll get some actual white paint on that we're going to use, and then we can go ahead and begin the installation of all of the um, acetate windows, and then we'll get the window frames installed on top of that. So anyway, that's, that's the first step, getting that all done. Here's my K instructions right there. And, uh, yeah, so I think those are the big notes. Pressing on. Okay, so here we go. Uh, very pleased with where we're at uh, on this section. 
um, basically what I did was I primed it. I put on like the doors and the big, you know, photo etch pieces that also need to end up being white. Uh, and then I went back over it with our primary color, Tamiya Flat White. And then I sealed it uh, with a clear lacquer uh, from uh, Alclad. And it's all nice and hard and has a good even coat and we're good to go. So now we have all of these photo etched windows from KA that I've already pre-primed and painted uh, brown that need to get installed. But we do want our windows to go in here. And so I've got my handy dandy little box of parts left over from the Missouri. Uh, and Nora helped me out with her cricket the other day. So let me grab one. So for example, there we go. Uh, I had to change it, but there's a little piece of cut out uh, arched window. And so what I will do is um, I'll show installing just a few of those because someone asked this is not like this is not like earth shatteringly exciting uh, work but it makes a big difference and it's a huge step forward in what we need to do so yeah press it on here let's get this stuff installed okay before we get uh, too crazy I want to show you this I'm using this evergreen adhesive canopy glue uh, excellent adhesion dries flexible and clear this is what I've been using so far and it's what I'm going to use to attach our little glass pieces. So let's show you that. Okay, so here we go. I just take a little bit um, and drag it kind of along this edge. You can use it to fill the gap a little bit. I try not to get too excessive with the glue because even though it, it does dry clear and these windows were not, this is old glass, turn of century glass was not perfectly clear. It had some little warps and stuff in it. I'm trying to minimize the amount of extra that might end up in there. So then we'll take our piece, find the edge, and just drop it down in, like so. And there's a little bit of loosey-goosiness here, and that's OK. There we go. Because the window frame is going to fill this entire edge, so that works out nicely. So let's go ahead and do the next one. And you guys might have a better way of applying the glue. Um, this works for me. Now, some of you might be saying, well, that recess, because I said this, that recess is meant to accept the window frame and we're filling it with the window itself. So what happens to the window frame? Well, you're right. It ends up sitting a little bit proud on the surface, but I found that it works out nicely. And if you look at pictures of the Titanic, uh, the frames were proud of the wall. They didn't sit flush. So you can see right there, there's a little bit of extra. Um, if I give it a second, I can wipe that away, but it'll also dry clear and it's going to end up getting covered by the frame itself. So I'll slide this over a little bit. Okay, uh, I'm going to clean up a little bit of that excess glue here. Give me a second. Okay, there we go. There's our four windows already installed. Uh, so now what I need to do is continue this whole process uh, and do all the rest of the windows. And then we'll come back and we'll drop the frames on that have been pre-painted. Um, you want to give this some time to dry out. You can put a little bit of rubbing alcohol once this is dry on a Q-tip and clean up the window bit. If, a little bit if you want to make it absolutely perfectly clear. Uh, but remember, there, wa there was imperfections in this glass back then, and it actually helps make the glass look more viewable. Because if you, 
if you turn it right, you can't see inside there at all. I mean, you can see right inside there. You can see perfectly through the glass, and it doesn't look like there is any glass there, and then, you know, that defeats the purpose. So it's like, there you go, get that glare, and then it looks good. So anyway, uh, we've got many, 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 many more to do. So let's do that, and then we'll get back to you. Pressing on. Okay, so once you get all of your uh, acetate in, my method is just to use a little bit of CA glue in each corner. Uh, I don't worry about it fogging up because it's on the outside, so the fumes have a way to escape and not cause troubles. Uh, but you can also just go ahead and use the same uh, white glue, um, liquid clear, to uh, attach your photo etch. It should be just fine and you're just going to drop it in you got a second get it lined up sit give it a little pat and let it be and then you have your uh, have your window frame and it looks nice so that's how we install them all we just got to do the rest pressing on okay so once you get the uh, window frames in, you got to go ahead and install the hand railing. And there's one little piece right there. It's kind of big. And you got two of those on each side. And then, yeah, you move along. So I figured I would go ahead and show uh, how to do that because, yeah, someone might want to see how to do that. So let's go ahead and install this next piece to the right. Okay, so for starters here, uh, I've chosen, I'm zoomed in all the way, this fine little piece of photo etch. Uh, it's not particularly small. Um, as you can see, uh, pick your denomination of choice here for sizing. It's not, it's not the worst. There's other, other things that are smaller that you get to deal with. So uh, this gloppy mess is my CA glue, and here is a little bit, um, this, this chunk right here is still wet. So what I like to do is take my tweezers and grab the little round bump. This is, uh, by the way, the KA photo etch detail. And so I'm gonna grab it like so, and then just ever so carefully drag it through this CA, just that backside. Please note, you should be using brand new if not nearly brand new CA glue for this task otherwise you're gonna have problems and while you can mask it off uh, I just eyeball it make sure it's straight I've got this thing mounted straight up and down and you set it in there like so uh, take a look up top here to double check my positioning it's pretty good there we go that's better just like that. Okay, and that's it. That's how you install it. Crisis averted. Now, you wanna go ahead and let it uh, set up a minute. And one of the things you could do is get a little bit more CA glue and use a needle, or I'm using a knife blade in this case, come up from the bottom and just touch right along the edge here where the PCA contacts the bulkhead. And it'll give it just a little bit more rigidity. And what we're going to do to finally seal the deal on all this stuff, no pun intended there, I guess, I don't know, uh, is we're going to paint it. So what's going to happen is when all these are installed, I'm going to come back with matching flat white Tamiya paint, and I'm going to very carefully touch right along the edge. That'll take away in the glossiness of the CA glue that you might see. And this back piece of photo etch that's touching the bulkhead will virtually disappear. Then we'll come back with a very light piece or a light brush and we'll lightly take care of this uh, front edge. We'll paint that a, a wood brown and it'll pop right out. And then you'll have a nice handle on. All you got to do is install that a whole bunch of times and not knock it off. All right, let's get those done so we can move on to the painting process. Okay, so while putting all this railing on... Um, I think you could you kind of see here. It's not really important for this segment to see that I got it all on this side. What I was doing was I was mounting it up, you know, like this, and I, I just put it between these two little 
blocks like that so that they were up in there and you're good to go. Uh, the problem I ran into though is now because there's railing on this edge and all along this edge super fragile I can't put it down like this to handle the railing you know on the, on the other side and I've already started some there and really would be nice if it stayed upright like this so Nora came down here and I was telling her my problem she goes well, what if you made something that let it hang in here and I thought well that's a really good idea so uh, I made up this little jig and so you just slide it through like that and now the whole thing sits upright so I can work on it so battery's dying in the camera uh, anyway that's how I fix that problem pressing on well, good morning. We're back in action here. So here's our railing installed, and here is some matching Tamiya white, flat white paint. So next step in the process here, and it really doesn't matter how you go about this, but we got to get that photo etch along the bulkhead that we glued to painted white. And obviously this is just a match, and it takes care of any extra gloss that may have been left over by the uh, CA glue attaching it and thin out and smooth it out and you're gonna do like that. Now I realize that it looks pretty prominent right now it's not very well hidden and that's true but it ends up working out real nicely because when we get the brown put on uh, your eyes drawn to the brown edge of the railing and you, you tend to not see the white part of the photo etch here. Uh, the only thing you gotta do, you gotta make sure first of all you get enough paint on here and second of all you gotta make sure that you don't accidentally fill in the gap because there is a gap between this back piece and the actual wood railing piece in the front. I think you guys could see that. So anyway uh, we have to, I just continue along and I do this for the whole thing obviously and then um, and I'm showing you the top right now because it's nice and easy we're gonna flip it over and do the bottom side and you get opportunity here to touch up anything you want with some white paint as we go along um, so if you look closely you can see that there are nice little brass kind of round bumps that are they're there on purpose. That's the uh, handle or where, where the fitting for the railing goes together. And I thought about, well, what if I leave that brass? That would look kind of neat. But in the photographs that I have, uh, they don't appear to be brass. They look like they actually might be painted black. So then I thought to myself, well, I, sh I should put little black dots on there. And, you know, that'll look... That'll look sharp, right? It's so small that by the time you add the red, or I'm sorry, the, the brown for the hand railing, it's just, it just disappears and you, you, you don't see it. So it's like, well, a lot of effort and time into something that you won't see whilst staring directly at it. So yeah, we're gonna admit that. So anyway. Uh, I'm just going to continue on around getting this white on and I'll flip it over. We'll come back and do the uh, handrails here. So give me just a few minutes here. Press it on. Okay, here we are back at it. So, uh, yeah, this is the complicated act of painting the railings brown. Uh, I'm using Rust. Uh, that's the name of the color. This is an enamel by uh, Model Masters, but I actually think it ends up making a really scale accurate uh, wood color when you're done. So I am applying this primarily just to the top. Your brush will naturally tend to put a little bit of an edge on the face so you could come back and do that if you'd like to. Um, but it's not really necessary because you get a really great thin line effect uh, just by doing this. So let me show you here. Get this crossed. Just like so. All right, you guys can see that. And then tip it up. Boom, you've got that perfectly 
straight hairline edge there that works out really good. Uh, while I sit here and I do all this stuff because I got to go and go and go and go all the way around, uh, I do go ahead and leave stuff on to listen to. And what do I like to watch here? I'm actually following this guy, uh, John Builds Iconic Models. He's in the UK. Fantastic gentleman. Um, John, I do watch your videos. I do like your stuff. I'll even give that one a thumbs up right there on the screen. It would be cool if everyone would go check out his stuff. He's got 7,700 subscribers. I'm sorry, 7,800 subscribers. It would be really cool if this guy could get up to 10,000. I know you guys are awesome, and it would really be good to go check him out because he, he actually, I do this for fun. He does this to help supplement his existence, and that really helps him out if everyone would go give his videos a like, and give him a subscribe. And then uh, he has a very soft, nice, easy voice, which I enjoy listening to when I'm doing all this type of meticulous work. And uh, it, it, just, it just helps out. And I think John's a fantastic builder, and he's got a lot of cool stuff going on. The biggest way that you can help a model, or we'll get back over here real quick, when, or a YouTuber, I'm sorry, that is, this is the biggest thing you can do, even just if you want to help my channel. Obviously, there's Patreon. Obviously, there's buying stuff and things like that. But I'm talking about just like your average person. The number one way you can help a YouTuber is to watch the entire video and all of the ads. Now, that's no fun. Nobody wants to watch the ads. But if you're like going to get up and go to work, throw up one of your favorite YouTuber's videos on your computer or something and let it ride. That helps the watch time go up, and that helps uh, the ad revenue come in, which YouTube has done a really good job lately of taking away from everyone. So, excuse me. So, yeah, that's how, with no money at all, you could seriously help out a YouTube channel. Just let the video play and let it play through the entirety of the advertisements, and that, that goes a long way to helping people out. So anyway, uh, that's my little pro tip. Go check out John Build's Iconic Models and uh, give him a like on all the stuff and subscribe. Oh, and feel free to leave a comment for the YouTube algorithm. If you just say, hey, enjoyed the video, nice build, something positive and nice, real quick liner, that goes huge uh, into helping us all out on YouTube. And again, that's something that costs you, the viewer, zero dollars. All right, let's see if we can get all this uh, wrapped up. we got some more to go, and let's see if we can't get John total 10,000 subscribers. Pressing on. Okay, here we go. All of the hand railings are all painted up. All the glass for the windows are installed. All of the frames for the windows are installed, and it looks nice. So... Next thing we gotta do is let all this dry up for a few minutes and we need to throw it up onto the A deck and assess if there's anything we could see through the windows that we haven't already addressed to make sure that uh, that is all taken care of. It's also another opportunity to assess if we miss paint anywhere, uh, things like that. Anyway, a whole bunch of work went into just putting all this together. Now let's slap it up into the ship, see what it looks like. Okay, here we are back in action. Uh, I just set the piece up on top here so you could take a look at it. Touched up a little bit of paint. It's definitely not glued into position yet or held down. Um, just giving it a cursory glance. So, uh, yeah. All right, so right here you can, you can obviously see inside uh, the ship a little bit because there's light coming through. And if we zoom in here... You need to look at what we're looking at. Um, see some of our little glass stuff. Right here, this is the reading room. And trying to decide what, if I want to put some white, white walls behind here. That room is white. And then over here to the right, um, it's that little restaurant. They had that Starbucks inside of it and everything in that web cafe over here. And so, and then up over here, uh, this is like a hallway or something you walk through, and then I can't remember what's going on here. But this, like by the grand, I think this just gets you in and out because this is the forward grand staircase is up in this area, and then you've got, you know, just a bunch of rooms to go and sleep in. 
no big deal. So, um, yeah, it seems like I should probably put something in here because you got a lot of light coming in. But uh, let's take a second here. And I'm just going to do a, a quick set in and in position, throw the boat deck up here. Do just a quick, you know, dirty. There you go. So now you can still see that there's light coming through, right? There's quite a bit because we have this whole opening right here. But as soon as you cover it up, you know, it goes like that. Um, and we get up into here. And this I like because you want a little bit of light come through the grand staircase area because you can, I think you, that that is like a see-through area on the ship. Uh, then up here, the rooms go dark, and I think that's fine because, you know, yeah. So, and then I don't know how much this you'll see because we got to put the big sides on here, right? That's the whole, that's really what I'm working towards here. Let's move up this way um, so you can see what I'm talking about. The, this, once this is on here, then we can, I'm sorry. We can, we can attach this photo etch, and I need this point of contact and this edge as a point of contact. And we gotta do a ton of work to the boat deck to get prepped for that. So, yeah, just something to think about. And then we also have, right back here, those pieces have to be installed. Uh, we'll do that after I glue this down because the whole thing's curved and then this fit is really tight with these pieces it's like this guy i don't even know if that's the right one but they yeah they don't even want to fit right now i gotta trim the edges off they'll end if i turn it sideways they end up going in there like so and connecting that passageway so uh yeah let me let me go ahead well the, you guys are getting a good view of this here you can see what's going on um I'm going to think on this. I think I'm going to throw some styrene back here, at least in this reading room, because it was white and it was blocked off separate. And then if you could see through here, that's fine. A little bit of light because that should go all the way across from port to starboard. Uh, being wide open, I believe that's that's this restaurant was a big open room. But you're not going to... It, unlit, we're not going to see a lot of details, especially because uh, I put the... KA window frames in. See how there's all that little detail in the windows right there? Um, all that fanciness. That is only on the KA set. Uh, that's not in the Pontos kit. That's not in the kit kit. And the glass kit that I'm working on, uh, it's just a sheet of glass for you to install that if you're not using the KA parts. So, okay, let me, uh, let me do some thinking and I'll get back to you here. All right, pressing on. Okay, here we are back at it. Uh, as you can see, I've got a couple of very lonely looking pieces of furniture over here. But um, what I did is, let's see here. I put in a couple walls right here in the reading room uh, like they're supposed to be. And then down here, I went ahead and cut out the support structure. Hopefully, I don't regret that later. Uh, for the first class lounge so that the light can get all the way through and get my hands out of your way uh, drop down like so so now uh, yeah you, you can see some light through there yes you would be able to kind of see some furniture through there but I, I'm just not going to clutter up this whole thing and then when we get over here to the reading room um, well, they're hard to see, but you know, you got a couple of chairs and a table there and a couple of chairs there on the off chance that you see this. So, because then we're going to throw this on top, you know, roughly like this. That little bit of light that's coming come through there is ultimately going to get blocked off. So, <clears throat> this is this is more than satisfactory. So, now what we need to do is glue this whole thing into position. Uh, then I'll come back and we'll work on, we'll just throw this in. One of these sides, I got them backwards in my head. One of these sides is like a cloak room and something else. You just kind of come inside, you don't see anything. And then uh, you've got a long hallway on the other side, which would have a little revolving door. So we'll put up our piece of uh, 
basically veneer in case you see through there and then we'll move on to the uh, boat deck getting installed so let's go ahead and get some glue on this and get it weighted down okay uh, someone wanted to see me install and do more building so let's get into this exhilarating part of installing this part of the deck I'm using my good old-fashioned orange glue uh, because I want it to really hold and this stuff works just like the Tamiya ultra thin it melts the plastic to the plastic styrene technically and it's nice and thick and gelatinous and it does not set up right away you, you got to let this sit for quite a bit uh, like 45 minutes half hour but I like to just squeeze it directly out of the tube into the corner at like a 45 degree angle like cock this way it could expand out towards the wooden deck and up and in where no one's gonna see it and we'll go ahead and get this thing ready to put down. Uh, the Keen Hawkeye versions you guys might see right here, we have two little pillars. Um, I was like, oh man, I don't know if I like the idea that I cut out all the support structure. Not a lot of anything particularly heavy goes above it right here. But we're using uh, resin. 3D printed funnels on this build, and they're not light. So, long term, I don't want any sagging to develop. I don't know where my um, client's going to be s storing this thing. So, you know, if it's in a really warm room or something, I guess it's possible that over the life of the model, you could get some sort of sagging. Not sure. Okay, so that's installed. Uh, do yourself a favor, anywhere where you've got known excesses of glue that might end up where you don't want it, now is the time to move it around a little bit. Like up here we have way too much, right where I ended. Okay, so ready to go. I'm gonna start at the front. I'm being real careful like this because there's those staircases that we fussed over last time. Um, I don't want them to get damaged because there's nothing I could really do to fix them once they're once this is in. And this is just kind of gonna click into place. All right, now uh, I need to kind of weight it down. I've got my one, two, three blocks. They're really heavy, so I'm going to put them up here in the corners. All right, and then uh, I went out and I grabbed my hand planes from the shop. They're heavy. This has wood on it still. Okay, at least on this side, it's down all the way, and it looks really good. Our edges are fine. That looks good. I've got to come over on your guys' side. Oh, yeah. That's pretty nice. Maybe we could do... A little bit more right here. Maybe what I'll do, the front's clipped in real nice. I'll slide this down. Okay. So now they just this just sits. 
All right, that's for the people who wanted to see me building something. A lot of this, uh, a lot of the ship is like this. You just work on these big parts and then um, glue them on, and you're and you're set. Well, all right. So while that's happening, uh, let's see. We've got these two pieces. I hope these are in the shot right here. That have to go into position. So I'm going to go ahead and get them painted up, get the windows and the window panes installed, just like we had before. And then hopefully when this is dry, we can custom fit them uh, into position because they're a little long and tight right now. Once that's done, we got to grab our deck. All these little fittings got to get trimmed off. Uh, we got to clean up the bottom because it's set to be lit. We're not doing all that. It needs to be painted. A uh, bunch of prep work's got to happen before we can put this on. So yeah, let's let some glue dry and press on. Okay, so uh, while I'm putting all this stuff together, I realized I can't skip talking about these parts. So this is piece B23 and B24, Bravo 23 and 24, and they go on either side of uh, a deck here like this, basically. And I thought, well, I'll just throw those on, no big deal. Uh, no, it is a big deal. So first of all, there's a little gap at the top. You see I've already filled it with styrene. You'll need to do the same thing unless you're doing the kit lighting. Uh, then the other issue uh, that you're going to have, if I slide over here, is the height. It sits directly on the scale deck's deck. There's no extra clearance or anything. So you need to make sure that it matches the height of the structure right here as well. Uh, otherwise, it will sit up proud about the thickness of the scale deck's deck, kind of like this, and your deck, boat deck won't sit down right. So you're going to have to get it lowered down. Uh, you'll have to sand it down to make sure that it matches. So I've done that on both sides. So now the other issue is if I stick it in here like it's supposed to go, like this, all right, that's going to be its position. Fits real nice. No trouble, right? With the exception of... Make sure you can see this in the camera. Yes, right here, this, this area. This piece comes to an end right at where the scale deck's deck ends. That is where the kit hull sides are also supposed to end. But we don't have the kit hull sides. They're missing. We are going to be putting on the um, 3D printed, I'm sorry, the photo etch sides. And they will bump up, I'm going to use this pencil, they will bump up like so on that piece right there. And hopefully you can make that out in the camera there. There's a gap. There's a gap basically the width of this black line. So we're going to need to, I'm going to get my photo etch out to double check this area here. But it's a real possibility I'm going to have to add a piece of styrene right here to fill that gap up. Otherwise it's going to look silly. And you'll have to do the same thing. So again, that's pieces B23 and 24 both sides. So let me get the photo etch out and make sure, um, yeah, that that's set up. Because we want to shim that out and get this all painted up uh, before we discover that little fiasco there. All right, thought it was worth mentioning. Okay, so I went ahead and added uh, my little strip of styrene. This is to both sides. Uh, it's not a 45 degree angle. This looks more like 30 degrees or something like that. It comes off, but uh, the point is right here, it matches and goes straight up and, you know, it'll butt up nice and flush uh, to our photo etch when we go ahead and we uh, get it. So now that that's done, I've got um, this piece and uh, a bunch of others. Do this right here, ready to be uh, painted up. I got a bunch of brass rods here, um, some other... Uh, poles for the lady dancers that the Titanic had that go up uh, and these pieces. So we're, we'll go ahead and get this all primed, painted white, and we'll install that. That all has to happen next here before we can get a deck installed. So yeah, pressing on. Okay, folks, I'm back. Uh, it's been, I've been on the road for probably uh, a week now. So I got some time to come home and work on this thing. So these uh, are poles that we were talking about earlier here. Let's zoom in. You need to put a brown I did anyway, a brown on the bottom right there. And you can see I just kind of glopped on. I had to mix that color. I wanted it to match the scale deck's deck. 
And so I did this uh, with my new favorite paints uh, from Life Color. They are enamel. I've talked. To, or I'm sorry. They are acrylic. I talked about them before. I bought just the basic color set, so I used the basic colors I had to mix everything together. Primary color I used was this matte flesh. Put a drop of raw Sierra in, and then a couple more drops of matte dark green. The Scale Dex deck is really green for some reason. Um, both of my decks are this way, and so there, there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, the deck on the Arizona is significantly more tan and brown colored. I actually like the look better, but these are fine. So anyway, uh, the idea is that when you drop this in here, it disappears, right? Like so. I'm just dry fitting it. And so it looks like a piece of the deck. And I got a monkey with the fit here a little bit because um, I did a whole bunch of work to get it to drop in. This is not structural. It doesn't support anything. But you need to make sure there's three of these. You go out of your way to make sure that they're level with the wall next to it because we don't want anything at all to impede the fit of the boat deck above it because this space right here is super critical for the photo etch that we're going to install. So as you can see right there, they, fit, they fit in nicely and there's no trouble. And you can't see uh, the base. Looking at it right there, we, it just looks like the pole terminates in the deck. And that's, that's exactly the look that we're going for. So uh, anyway, I want to mention that's how I mix the color up for the paint. Um, I'm going to tidy up those last couple of parts. Uh, oh, one more thing we could talk about. Right here in the back, two there and a couple holes here uh, go some poles. And uh, KA has you cut them out of brass. So I went ahead and did that. And then I painted them white and they will drop into said hole like this. They'll look real sharp and, and there you go. I went way out of my way, I don't know if I can even show this on camera here, to make sure it's the same height as the wall. And I was going to put a drop of CA glue in here and pre-install it just like so. But then it would be freestanding. If anything happens to it, you're going to have trouble. Because I went on my way to get the height exactly right, I'm going to install the deck. And um, then I'll come back in with a drop of CA glue right here. And I'll just put this in kind of sideways and stand it up. I'll have it anchor in and stand up like that. That's the plan for installing that. Uh, we'll show the end results um, of how that plays out when we are finished. So we got this piece up here to glue in and we can move on to the boat deck. All right, pressing on. Okay, so we'll go ahead and drop some of our thin glue down in here. And then I painted on the side of uh, this beam, even though the top's the only part that's gonna be exposed. If the fit's not exactly perfect, you'll still see a little bit of the gray, so that's why you have the brown paint coming down on the side a bit. All right, and then we're going to drop it in. Should be pretty good there. And then, this might block your view a little bit, I'm going to take this ruler. There we go. I'm just... Laying it across, that's really good. I want to double check that it's flush. That's really, really important. And then uh, probably can't see it very well from your view. I need to bring it outboard just a little bit. There we go. I want it to be up and down. There. Yeah, it's actually perpendicular to the deck, uh, which is the way it's supposed to be. So uh, we'll do that for the other side as well. Um, and then there's a long one, and they'll be glued up, and that'll work out nicely. All right, pressing on. OK, we are finally almost there. Uh, went ahead and installed that wall. And the window frame on both sides and we've got our little um, 
poles installed. We don't have the ones in the back. That's okay. Like I said before, we're going to stay there till later. So now we've come to the point where we have to prep the uh, boat deck. Now this is the bottom of the boat deck. And if we zoom in here, you'll see that you've got these raised little lines. These are the tracks uh, meant to put LED light strips in that are from uh, the lighted kit. We're not doing that. We don't need them. We're going to remove them. Uh, so if we flip it over, we have a ton of stuff on here. So these are all the kit default uh, lifeboat little stands. We don't need those. Um, there's a bunch of sp stuff I've marked in black that needs to be removed. Those are just raised surface details and some more stuff here and then this whatever that thing is. Uh, we've got to get those cut off here so we could get this prepped for paint. Um, it would be nice also to get the wooden deck on. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff we got to do. So let's go ahead. I had someone ask me about well, how do you remove all these little surface details. So let's let's do that real quick. Okay, so uh, for like big raised things like this, I just take my sprue cutters and snip them off like that so that you get the bulk of the material out of the way, just like you see there. There's some left over. Then uh, I like the big X-Acto blades. This is um, curved one. It's brand new. It's sharp. And, you know, just be careful. Put it on here like this. And make sure that's in the shot. Make sure you're cutting away from yourself and you're all set. Then uh, you can scrape, use it like a scraper, just to get that surface detail off and stop once it's flush. Same thing applies over here for these kind of details. Um, if they're big, if they're high enough, you can get in here with your cutters. And snip them right off and then it's kind of leaves that big ugly mess right there come back like that that's it and it's all nice and smooth and you're good to go so you just got to repeat that over and over again you can if you don't have good cutters um, clean my blade off here very carefully you don't want to slip, and this is a, again a brand new sharp blade. You can go ahead and work your detail off like that. And same thing. Scrape off the excess, you're done. It's nice, flush, and smooth. So uh, we're going to do that for all of these little details that are left along here real quick and then we'll come back with the next step. Okay, so back on to um, our A deck here. So let's see here, if I zoom in, there you go. So I went ahead and did some little filling in of the uh, little sinkholes. I think, there you go, you could see it. Um, and then I got some primer on here. But what we need to do is address the issue of this lip right here. I'll flip it over so you can see. Right along this edge, see how we have this nice, narrow, thin edge? We're going to be gluing our photo etch there, so uh, I'd like as much surface space as possible. So what we have, uh, this is just 0.04 styrene strip that I cut in half. And what we need to do is glue it onto this lip right here, like so. I think you can see that it disappears so that uh, we could fill this in and then we'll get the rest of our paint on here. We need to, this is all leading up to putting the photo etch sides on. So let's go ahead and get that glued on. Uh, we're going to use our Tamiya extra thin cement, the quick setting stuff. And just glue it on, run it along the whole edge.
Okay, just like that. Uh, and we'll continue on down and around on both sides. And then once it's uh, set up, you can see the white that's the extra hanging off here. I'll go ahead and trim it up to get it flush uh, because then we'll get we'll address the much more serious issue uh, that needs to be sorted out. So let me let me go ahead and get the rest of this glued on here. Okay, so uh, now that we've got our little edge on there, I don't know if you can see that, white to gray, uh, there you go, beefed up on the edge. We can go ahead and move on to uh, an important part. Now this segment involves a lot of talking, so for some of you folks, you might as well skip this, and then when you stumble onto this point on your own build, you can come back and watch it yourselves again, because you just want to taking in the notes so we need there's nothing really this just sits on here there's nothing that really locks it in the position but you need to get this deck in exactly the right spot so what I did is uh, I got a little dowel rod and I put some tape on it so it fits in right and at the aft uh, grand staircase these two holes line up and just push this down in here and that locks the back into place it gets this hole lined up and then all we got to really do is worry about up here at the bow getting the uh, deck left and right centered. And it's not going to move back and forth, so I just really need it left and right. And I guess I could just kind of eyeball it, hold it in the position here. Um, but I'd like to use the kit provided uh, bridge, because it's all one piece, to get to you know, lock in a place for the next part that we gotta do. But there's there's a little problem, let me show you. Okay, right up here on the bow, see this little edge and this little edge? The 3D printed parts have extended out past uh, where they need to be. Now, I thought about, I'm like, well, did I, did I get them in the wrong place by error? Are they too far forward and they should be slid back? No, because in the back, they're flush. So these parts ended up being just a hair longer than um, the deck right here, A deck. So I wanted to take the kit part and drop it in here and click it into place, and that way it's you know we're holding the holding the whole thing where we need it to be. So what I'm going to do instead is to enable this. I don't want to cut this off. I don't want to lose my little post there and everything. And I'm a little worried about this snapping. Now there, I did position this. Looks like, actually, looks like I replaced and put in a piece of styrene right here. So I could actually go ahead, pop those out, very carefully cut this off flush, and then that will allow this kit part to fit in a position. So you know what? Now that I've seen that, I'm going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and pull. You can see it right there. I'm going to pull this out on both sides, and I'll cut that off flush. Uh, yeah, I'm thinking about that on the fly. Let me, let me do that real quick here. Okay, that worked out really well. Uh, the alignment, let's see. Looks good. There we go. So now... And we'll talk about bridges in a minute here, but now this is in place. You can also use these squares in the opening for the staircase right here. But we've got our bridge uh, where we want it. The reason for this is the deck. We need to make some measurements for the deck. And this part is actually very important if you're doing this. Okay, so right here is an expansion joint. And so I put a little mark with a pencil right above it on both sides on the boat deck. Uh, the reason is, I'm going to grab my calipers here, and some of you remember this from several videos back, but it's time to just double check everything. I'm going to measure that width. Alright, we've got 137.35, so let's write that down. Then further on down the line we have our next expansion joint. I've also marked it. One thirty seven point five two. And then way down at the end, 
I'm going to go right to the uh, end of the boat deck here where it turns in because there's a defining spot right underneath the A deck, same place. All right, I got 136.53. Okay, now that we've done that, let's just take this off. Now, let's measure the deck below it at exactly the same position. One thirty-eight point two seven. All right, so that previously was 137.35. Uh, we'll go down here. 138.37 again. And then let's go to the very back of the ship. It was where this wall comes in. We're at 137.48. All right, so this is the A deck, or sorry, boat deck, and this is the A deck. And what do we see? Well, we've got basically a mill wider below than we do on top. Rough math, right? So that means per side, it's a half a millimeter narrower than on top. So double check your kit. For this okay we are only talking about a half mil on each side but and they should I mean that's really really close right so what you could do is try and thin down uh, this edge but I'm using the 3d printed parts and it is extremely brittle the only thing I can really think to do uh, is to hit it with a file and sand it and honestly I don't want to lose a half mil uh, on here because it's got the edge and everything and it's got the look so what I'm gonna do instead is add a half a millimeter strip to this edge on both sides and that will give me the same width and they'll be parallel and then I'll have a nice edge right along here to glue my um, photo edge to which is really the next big thing but before we do that let's talk about the bridges Okay, so for the bridges, uh, obviously you have the kit supplied part, which is very nice. Um, anything that KA adds on or Pontos adds on, you can go ahead and attach those parts and get this glued into position and you're off to the races and good to go. Uh, some people don't like this bridge though, so there's other options. Uh, I have in my possession three, so the first one, right? Then I also have from China 3D Prints uh, their 3D printed bridge, and it comes in two parts. And of course, it's it's outstanding. And on the inside here are some of your other pieces, and you've got your little ledges and everything all set and ready to go. It's exquisite. Uh, it's in two parts, so you would you would remove that and um, attach it to the front up here and you would be good to go. And it also includes, uh, for down here, this, this deck right here. This is the piece. This is all extra, so you'd need to remove all of this. Uh, and it's got the little rail. Let me get this focus here so you can see it. It's got the rail on the top, all nicely detailed. And then in the back, these are all supporting structures down here to remove that, but you can see the little stanchions are in place for the deck. And then it's got the right shape, and you would put it in right down there. And you could go ahead and put your acetate behind the windows, and it's very nice. Then all you got to do is connect uh, the two deck pieces right there, which uh, I'm not sure if they're provided. And even if they aren't, you can, if you're using these pieces, you can scratch build those, no problem. The other option, the one we're using here, is uh, Photo Etch right here. This Photo Etch bridge from Woody's Model Works. And my client purchased 
uh, this set is, is included for it's on sheet A. You can see right up in the top there. And here's our big side pieces that we're going to be putting on. So we're going to be using this. Well, to do that, though, uh, right here, you end up utilizing the original bridge piece to help fold and get the sheet the way that you want. The problem is um, the kit supplied part is beefy and thick. The photo etch is photo etch thickness. So uh, Neil told me it ends up too small. I'm sorry, the photo etch ends up too big. And so what you end up having to do is you need to put the thickness of this plastic back on here. And I'd like to do that before I get all carried away with um, gluing everything up and putting this in place. Because once this is glued down, adding a strip of styrene around here all the way around and getting it right, it's going to be a little fiddly. And I'd, I'd just rather do it ahead of time. So what I'm going to do is measure the thickness of this piece right here. And I'm going to build that up and I'm going to add it to this edge. Then we'll be ready to put the boat deck into position. So yeah, let me go ahead and add the one half a mil strip along this edge, half a mil on this edge, and then we'll put the thickness of this piece up in front right here, and then we'll be ready to press on. Okay, here we are back in action. So zooming in here, we've replaced our little uh, pieces that I bust off on either side. We've added a one millimeter thick strip to the front here and this wall right here to make all of this flush um, because we are using uh, the photo etch pieces that go here we've lost the thickness of the kit plastic so we had to add that in so everything lines up so that needs to be painted but I wanted you to be able to see that then down here zoom back out so here's our A deck on the front we've added one mil of thickness and on the side of the wings um, that go out and then nothing on the back and then you can see here uh, quite clearly the one or sorry this is 0.5 mil 0 0.5 mil strip on either side to give us the width and we're within a couple hundredths of uh, or tenths sorry of a mil uh, for being parallel to uh, the a deck which you know right here this this width. So uh, now that that is done, because the weather is actually fantastic today, uh, I'm going to run this outside and get a final coat of white paint on right there. Uh, we need to paint up these little edges on the front here we talked about. And I think also um, the top of this piece I'm going to paint black because that's basically what we've got going on with the waterways here. You're not going to you, you might see it. You're not really going to see it, but you might see it looking here. So I'm going to make sure the tops of these edges, these waterways are black, so they match the scale decks deck. And then, um, yeah, we'll get ready to finally, we're almost ready to put the boat deck on. All right, pressing on. Reliable camera person. <laughs> All right, folks, thanks to really rough help, and it's rough. Uh, we've got the bottom of our deck painted up from yesterday. Um, so what we did very quickly here is the waterways. I, I just touched them up with a little bit of black paint on the top. Uh, Nora pointed out that they're all quote effed up along the side right here, but no one's going to see that. That's why they are the way they are. Uh, up in front here, I said I was going to paint it um, black, but I changed my mind and just mixed up a couple custom color of wood uh, on top there so that you'll see that. So now all we have to do is put the boat deck on. And we've discussed this successively, but we're ready. We're going to use... Have we, though? Yes. <laughs> For all those people who think we don't. Uh, so anyway, we're going to go ahead and use our orange glue because... It's clear. Well, yeah, but it, it will bite into the plastic. This is a big, heavy part. I want a little bit of time for it to... Does it dry orange? Why'd you call it orange glue? Because of the color of the uh, container. This mm. is like from the 80s um, when you were a little girl. This is the color that these things were back then. You probably weren't familiar with this stuff. But what it does 
is it melts into this plastic that I'm touching. It will melt into the plastic above it. And when it dries, there's no real getting it apart. And that's what we want. Now, this will take a few minutes. Uh, it's stinky. I am putting it on the raised surface. I'm trying to be careful and err on the side, the inside edge, so that we minimize the... Um, You're doing an excellent job. Yeah, the glue from coming out onto the side that might possibly show. And this stuff does not set up right away. You've got a long working time, and we have a very large area here that needs a lot of glue and contact, and that's why we're, we're doing it like this. Um, Is this the part where I tell a joke? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't think you were going to say yeah. <laughs> it's for everybody says... <laughs> For, the, for all, like, three people who complain that there's too much talking on this channel and not enough building, uh, there's three of you. That's it. <laughs> Just I mean, three, huh? There is. That's it. They get really cranky, that's, and they make their little comments. That's hilarious. All three of them. You well, know what I say. I'll refrain from using their names. They're embarrassed anyway. Because uh, I tried to explain to one dude, this model builds itself. I just commentate. Mm -hmm. We don't know who's doing this right now. Mm -mm. It's all speculation. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, I will point out another reason I'm using this glue. In case you don't recall, this deck's curved. There's a huge arch in it from bow to stern and a dip in the middle. I might have to read over all this gluing. Yeah, well, or we'll edit a giant chunk of this out, like, <laughs> just put in the excerpts. Okay, show of hands, who wants to hear a story while well, he does all the gluing? <laughs> it's too late for that, huh? <laughs> Should have done that at the beginning. <laughs> I don't see anybody raising their hands. I don't know what they were thinking here. They had that opportunity. Okay, you can't make me laugh when I'm doing this because then the glue is not even in the shot. Then I'll have to hire a new... Yeah, person. you do that. Yeah, hire someone. That's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And this is probably already dry. Mm. It's not. It <laughs> doesn't not. work like that? No. <laughs> okay. No, it takes a long time for it to dry. See, that would be my, my panic. My panic well, state would be like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, this end is drying. It's a legitimate concern, which is why it's important to work fast. Well, and to know what your setup time is on the glue that you've chosen to use. If you don't have a lot of time, or if you, yeah, if you have a long, it's going to take a long time a to apply it. Then you need a camera person and a glue person. Yeah, exactly. Okay. <laughs> so now here's what we're going to do. We're going to pick this up, and I'm going to start in the back. I'm going to try and center it up over the grand staircase opening. I'm going to go ahead and poke my little guide, thing, guide in the hole area up. And Good thinking. Uh -oh, uh -oh, uh -oh. I've got some weights oh. that I'm going to set down midship because this is curved. Then up here we're way off, scoot over so it lines up. And I'm going to double check my edges, make sure we're right flush with the edge and the holes and we're good okay now that's really it we're gonna go ahead and put some heavy objects Ooh, I think I recognize those yeah on here <laughs> if those don't weigh it down nothing will exactly okay and then I'm just gonna do a little courtesy check here make sure we're Touching everywhere we want. Touching, touching, touching. Lots of touching. <laughs> that looks cool. Maybe I'll do it like this right on the very end. Okay, you're looking there. Yeah, you're pretty good at this. Yeah, looks nice. And this edge and this edge are flush which is really important. Okay, 
that's it. And then now, and I can already see it, uh, this bottom edge of A deck is now flush with the top edge of the boat deck perfectly parallel. So when we put our piece of uh, photo, photo etch, etch on, yeah, and here's my little sample piece, it's going to slap on like this. It's going to go straight up and down and not lean in and out like this and be all funny and cocked. It'll, it's exactly how we want. That's why we went out of our way to do all this. Okay, so uh, that's it for this episode. I know that this was a lot. Um, I was trying to get to this point. You could arguably have put the wooden deck on the boat deck and monkeyed with all that stuff first, but it's going to flex when you apply it. And yes, it should flex, but I'd rather have the plastic be in place, permanent, with the right shape, then come back and apply the um, wooden deck. So in our next episode, this is going to be a doozy. We're going to throw the wooden deck up here on the boat deck, tidy up a couple of the little painting things, but most importantly, we're going to put the photo etch sides on. That's going to be the big deal. Uh, these pieces are coming, well, we've already got them, they're here, they're from uh, Neil Woods at uh, Woody's Model Works and over in the UK, I've only talked about his stuff a lot. Hi Neil. Hi Neil, I'm talking about it again. Uh, my client bought his parts for this specifically, so they're going on next, That's the that was the whole point of getting this. So anyway, uh, thank you all very much for watching, thank you all for supporting YouTube channels and knowing how to do it for free now, hopefully you watch that little segment. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe to John Build's Iconic Military Models. And thank you to everybody who's gone to our website and purchased a really cool shirt. Nora appreciates it. And uh, windows, if you want the windows, get them while they're hot. Um, Nora makes all of them by herself in this little room that's super hot and sweaty. <laughs> very unclimate controlled, and she says she wasn't going to do that anymore. He's so, not kidding. So that's all you get. <laughs> all right, guys. Thanks very much. We'll see you guys next time.